How is it um, for, in the regions? I mean, we're, we're in Newcastle mm. now, and these guys are all based up here. So if something starts to, you know, does it have to be mentioned once, twice, couple, well, before you'll, someone will go... Oh, that's what I was going to say, really. That, I or, think yeah. really sometimes it just takes um, just one person, really. That, you know, it, for instance, I uh, with uh, Anna Calvi, who just signed to Domino, has had uh, relatively good success this year um, for such a new artist. Uh, my boss signed her because... Um, Bill Ryder-Jones from Liverpool, who used to be in the band The Coral, who mm. we published, and we're now releasing his sort of uh, experiments. Um, he just sent an email, and he'd, he'd seen... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're oh, wonderful I experiments, but I, I, I wanted to say, like, <laughs> songs, but they're not really songs. They're yeah. kind of, um, so he just sent an email, and he said, hey, Lawrence, check this out. I, I met this girl in a pub the other night, and she gave me her demo, and it's incredible. And then I think within a couple of weeks, Lawrence assigned her. We went no, to see her so, in another yeah. pub. And it's just like that, and it's um, so we, and actually Bill's always sending stuff. He's amazing, and but you just have these people that you know. Um, so it really doesn't. I don't think it's in London. Everything's accelerated, but a band like say um, Wu Life is one of the biggest industry scrums of the last probably 18 months or so. They're a Manchester band, and they were very sort of stoically anti-London, and they didn't actually come to London, mm. and that became part of their thing. This kind of aggressive kind of regionalism or something, which became, they built that as, into their aesthetic, which in a way I think is cool, and in a way maybe it's a little bit kind of unnecessary or a little bit obnoxious or something but it's definitely cool to I think in the internet age it's there is something cool about having that sort of pride about your region and word travels just as quickly as anywhere else yeah you just need that one person just to say and then if you ultimately if the songs are good and if you've um, spent the time in the early stages making sure that the music people hear first is the best it can be yeah. at the time obviously it's not gonna be like the finished product but yeah, I guess sure you're, one you're song and people are just like woof and then you're yeah. Well, this is you're sort of one of the mouthpieces, I guess, for a lot of Well, people. it's the exact reason why we started doing local columns. Um, and we've had two or three different people do the Newcastle column, actually, talking about what's happening here, what they've seen they've liked. And it's pretty easy to find out who that person is by clicking on their name on our site and sending them a link to your music, if you think it's relevant to what they're into. Um, but I think on a much more grassroots level, I think every city has... A small network of people and coming to things like this you end up meeting someone who knows someone who knows someone and even if it leads to a gig or some time in the studio or um, potentially someone that can help get you a show in Manchester or anything like that I think there's there's a network and I think it exists in the real world in this room right now but it also exists online. Digitization and, and uh, the internet as but there are so many artists out there now mm. and there are no managers or not enough managers and, and we, we teach managers as part of what we do. And we run an induction day. And we do not mention the word TV, press, plugger, promo, anything like that on there. Because it's not on anyone's radar when they come through the door the first time. The, the radar is all about social networking and building your fan base yourself. Um, every day at the moment, it's just constant, we get people. I, want a, I need a manager, and I go, what do you need a manager for? And they say, I want a record deal. And I go, there aren't any. And there's this silence at the other end of the phone, and you go, should we start again? And they go, well, well what? I said, what are you trying to achieve? What are you, where are you based? What have you done? Well, I've played two gigs in Camden, and I've recorded one track. And it's like, right, I, and I've got a bit of paper I send them, and it's called, I need a manager. And it's very harsh, and it says, go away. <laughs> develop, write lights of songs, develop your fan base. No one's interested in you yet, yet because a manager, if they're on 20%, needs to earn a living. How are they going to earn a living from you for a year or two years? They've got to give a load of their life to share your vision. So you have got to go and, and, and start that off yourself. And I think it's, there are, as well as being managers out there, there are lots of people who can help you. Generator exists. They are people who can help you. So you've got to start that bit and do it yourself. You've got to find people who can help you. And often the people who can help you are fans. You know, mm. We teach on our course, you know, if someone wants to do your website, get a fan to do it. But we always say, make it a finite thing. Thank you. Please design my website. I will give you a T-shirt and tickets for the next five gigs. Thank you very much. Take it back. Next bit. Who would like to do this? Can someone help me do this? Who would like to design our record sleeve? These things can be done. For me, I personally feel that you don't need to make a thousand CDs or a thousand seven inches. You probably need to make 20. Um, there's, a, there's an artist that I've helped and she made um, four CDs. And they were, all, they were quite nice. They were made with like flowery paper and ribbons. Um, 
she sent four CDs out and got four reviews um, in the Enemy, the Daily Mirror, um, and she only because she'd spent a few months reading, trying to work out who the right people were, the people that actually would be amenable to covering something, um, and that was kind of two, three months of research, um, of really honing in on who the right person is that's actually got scope, and sending them a nice personal letter, package turning up looking nice, not looking ridiculous, but it fit with her music, it te the texture felt like the sort of music she was making, and she said, I read your review of, I don't know, Tori Amos or something, and um, I really liked what you said, um, quoting a tiny bit or something to actually prove you've read it and you're not just making it up. Um, and that person actually sent a reply, she now built a relationship with the journalist who's been to like two or three of her shows, and um, not that being in the Daily Mirror has actually helped to sell any records, but... <laughs> Um, but it might help get but, to the next stage. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I, I very rarely get emails like that, um, or nice packages, or um, considering I've got an uh, Elliot Smith image on, as my Twitter avatar, I've only had two emails in three years from someone saying, I see you're an Elliot Smith fan, um, I thought you might like this, um, and the B-side is a cover of my favourite Elliot Smith song. And it's like, that is a really simple way of getting my attention in an email. Mm. And it not just being yet another press release from yet another faceless person that I have no idea who they are and I have no idea if they know who I am.